think if I click this, no, hang on, this one. Right, so we're up to lecture three. Lecture four won't be me. I haven't got to put there, but that's going to be Malcolm Ryan's going to give a guest lecture on stuff that won't be on the exam, but it'll be fun. I'm talking about games and stuff. But this is stuff that you need to know. And my first one, I've only got three things to do. Pass by reference, arrays and pointers, and then we're going to talk about string.h. So first of all, pass by reference. Let's go here and try writing a program. Um, <clears throat> so, whoops, that's the answer. Yeah, hang on, wait a sec. No, it's not. Now I remember what I did. I just thought I'd pre write it so it would go a bit faster. So, what we're trying to do in this program is try to swap two numbers. Not very exciting, but we've got x is 42, y is 197, and I've tried to write a function that's going to swap them around. Okay, so that's actually sometimes useful. For example, one of the most famous ways of sorting is called bubble sort, and that involves swapping things around. People are sniggering at bubble sort. Why are you disrespecting bubble sort? It sucks. It's okay, bubble sort is inefficient for the computer, but it's really efficient for you if you have to write it. And sometimes your time is more important than a computer's time. So the thing about bubble sort is if you had nothing at all and you had to write a sort program really quickly, it's a quiz one to write because only about five or six lines of code. But yeah, it's not very efficient. Anyway, so this is actually a key operation in bubble sort, swapping two numbers around. So let's just make sure we understand everything I've written here already. We've defined a function, void means it doesn't return anything, and it takes in two ints. And down here, We've um, said what it does. Well, it takes a and b. We create a temporary variable called temp, and we swap around a and b by putting a into temp, then b into a, and then temp into b. So let's uh, try compiling that. Is that big enough? Probably want it bigger, right? Oops. View, uh, edit, current profile, font, I'll oh, make it uh, 16. All right, so let's get into the right directory and we're going to compile it. So GCC, uh, well, Error. I oh, probably not that many R's in error, and it's going to be output to swap, and it's swap. Let's see. Here we go. Worked fine. Let's run it. Ah, and that's not so good. We had x equals 42, y equals 197. I printed them out. Then I called swap to swap them, and I printed them out again and they didn't change. So it's failed. What's gone wrong? Yeah? I put them in a function so they're not affecting the outside world and because it's void it's not returning, returning anything so it can't, it's not affecting the actual value. Yeah, so what happens, and this is the way C always works, is that down here in this function I can change A and B as much as I want. Right? but it won't affect anything else. That's good. That's a good feature of C in that I, can, I know that this function will not affect anything else. Right? There's a good way to say, you know, if I called swap and I looked at this function, I said, well, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to change any variables in the program that calls it. That's a good feature. It helps me find errors in, and make sure I don't accidentally change things without realizing it. However, it's not so good if I actually do want to change something. So the advantage is that, see, if you want, really want to change something, you've got to do something extra. And we've already seen the secret of that because we've already used a function where you have to change something. It's called scanf. And what do you have to do in scanf if you want to change something? Use the address. Use the address, yeah. 
If I didn't pass the address in in scanf, it couldn't return any values. So we've got to use the address. So I have to find the ampersand key. There it is, above the seven. So we pass in the address of x and y so that we can change them. Let's save that. Compile it. Ah. Oh. That's not good. What's wrong? It's complaining about integers and pointers. Well, here's the problem. When we pass, we take the address of something, the address of an int is a pointer to an int, which is not the same thing as an int. And we've said that the type of this function is int. So we have to change the type to match. And that's how you design the type. The type is pointer to int and type of b is pointer to int. And now the types will, will work. We can save it. And what? Oh, I've got to change it here as well. Oh, well, let's see what happens if I don't. Because you probably won't. Conflicting types. There we go. Now we know if you see that, it's because you haven't made, you've declared it up here and defined it down here and you've given it different definitions. And C will say, that's wrong, you can't do that. All right. Let's see if that works. Oh no. Now, but the errors are moving. This is on line 13, now we're down in the function. And it's saying integers and pointers again. Well, what's the problem? Oh, this is a pointer. A is now no longer an int, it's a pointer to an int. So when I say temp equals A, C says, well, hang on, that doesn't seem right. Because one temp is an int, and A is a pointer to an int. And they're not the same thing. So, now one thing that students will do when they see messages like that, they say, oh, it makes an integer from one about a cast. Oh, well, I just need to cast it. And all we've got to do is say cast. There we go. And you can see this isn't going to work. But that's what students often do when they get a message saying, hey, the types don't match, and this didn't, you didn't cast it. They say, oh, well, I'll cast it then. And usually if the types don't match, it's not because you didn't cast it. It's because you're doing something wrong. You're mixing things up that you shouldn't be. So we shouldn't fix that by casting it, but by doing a star. That's called dereferencing. So ampersand says take the address of something, Star is the inverse. It's the opposite of that. If I have a pointer, if I have an address, star says, give me the thing it points to. So that says now, take the thing A points to and copy it over to temp. Because we're going to do that consistently to everywhere we see A and B. Pardon? No. We're not changing A and B at all now in this function. A and B is not affected. When I say star A equals something, it doesn't change the value of A at all. A is a pointer. It changes the value of the thing it points to. All right? So let's run it and see. Compiles now. Running it. Woohoo! We swapped X and Y. So here's the general rule, just to make sure we see how we do this. <coughs> if you have a function which you want to change one of the arguments to it, right? So it's going to return a value. This is the way you have to do it in C. You declare it to be pointer to whatever the type is, in this case, pointer to int, but 
If A, which one to swap to doubles, it will be double star. When you call it, you've got to pass in the address of the variables you want to change. And down in the function, you've got to put everywhere where you have that pointer, you've got to dereference it. Star A, star B. Yeah? Like how? Without, without using the stars. Well, if I... Why didn't the, the very, very first version? Okay. Why doesn't it work? The answer is that the A and B in this function are copies of whatever values I put in there. So if I put in... Um, let me draw a picture here. Board, 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 lights, board, lights, on, that one, screen, up. So here's my chalk. All right. So here's main over here. I have a box for X, which has got, what, say 42 in it. And I got a box for Y, got 197 in it. If I call swap AB, then over here, I have an A and a B. My original version didn't work. What happens when I call swap AB? Oh no, I called swap X and Y, sorry. Swap X and Y. X, this 42 over here, gets copied. It's actually a copy of it and gets put it here. And then we take the value of 170, we get what's in here, the number in here, and we write it in over here. Okay? And then I successfully swap them around. Like this. Nothing changes over here because I'm working with copies of the values. All right, so that's the original version that didn't work. Whenever you have a function, any variables it declares, any parameters it's given are just local copies in there and they don't affect the outside world. So version two, where I say the address of X and Y, what's in here now is the address of this value here. So some big complicated number, I'm just going to draw it as an arrow. Because that's really what it means. It says whatever the number is, all right, it's the address of that variable, so it's like an arrow pointing to it. Yeah? If you, if you set it to return something, would it change what was in there? If we said this function was no longer void, but returned a value, yeah, then whenever we, when we say return, that value is made the value of swap, and then if we say it, assign it to something, then we can return a value that way, yeah. But because what type should it be? We'd have to make an int, and it can only return one int. We want to actually write two things at once. Can you return a raise? Can you return a raise? Well, you can't, but you can almost return a raise. And we're about to get to that, so... You know you've got a void function, yeah. and then you call it before, you call, you call swap, F, uh, swap before you put F, um, but it doesn't return anything. So why is it affecting X and Y after you put F? It's affecting X and Y because we've passed it the address of X and Y, and then in the function, we're looking up whatever is in that address and changing it. Yeah. But, uh, that, so the ch but are the changes only going to stay in that function? No, because what star A equals star B does, it doesn't change the A at all. A doesn't change. Instead, it says, let me look over here and store it, follow this arrow, and store the number in this box here, wherever A points to. Yes? So is the reason that we're doing this because we can't return more than one int? Yeah, so, well, for example, that's how scanf works, right? If scanf could return more than one, more than one thing, you, you could write it as a function instead. 
So that's why we need to know how to do this. If I want to have a function, quiet please, yeah. Usually the easiest thing to do for a function that's returning one thing is to make that the return type of the function. And it's much clearer and easier to see what's going on. But when I've got two things that I want to change, then I've got to do something like this. Or if I've got lots of things I want to change, which is arrays, which we're about to get to. Yes? Can we swap the address of A and B? What do you mean? Okay, he says, what if we did this? int star temp, and now what are we going to do? We could swap. We could do that. Is that what you're thinking? Compile it. Hey, it's all right. Run it. Is that what you expected to happen? Why did, that, what, why did that do that? Well, the reason is we're back over here and all that this function does now is change it like that so that A and B now point to the opposite of the other one of the, what they did. But then we end the function and they're, they're thrown away anyway. So that has no effect on the outside world because we've just swapped the things that A points to so that A points to the thing that B pointed to. Yeah. Uh, before you, so with all your original sorry, what, sorry, we'll go back to you. Sorry, star temp, someone said. What would happen if I did star temp? What do you think? It just changed the value. Why is the lights going on? That's... Now everything's turning on. Anyway, so if, what if we did you want to try doing this? Okay. What do you think is going to happen? All right, anybody, anyone want to make a guess? It'll work? Who thinks it'll still work? Who thinks it won't work? Ah, no one else is willing to commit themselves. Let's see what happens. Whoa, segmentation faults. <laughs> did, uh, did Richard tell you about segmentation faults? Pardon? There's a cartoon on it. There's a cartoon on the notes about segmentation fault. Yeah. So what's happened? Segmentation fault means that you've tried to dereference a pointer that doesn't point anywhere that it's allowed to point to. So, and that's exactly what we did right here, because we said star temp equals A. So it says, where, take whatever temp points to. So here's temp. We said it was a pointer somewhere, and says, Whatever that points to, copy A there, which was, I think, 42. So I try to put a 42 in the thing this temp points to. What did it point to? Who knows? We didn't initialize it. So it's just like a random number in there. So we've just tried to store 42 at a completely random location in the memory of the computer. Pardon? Yeah. So... Luckily, it gave us a segmentation fault. You guys are all too drunk with really old computers that, you, that I started programming with. They, they didn't do that. They just said, mm, OK, and they put 42 there, even if it was like some other program or part of the operating system. Or, you know. And so what happened was that your computer would crash. Or it, maybe it wouldn't crash, but it would run for a bit, and then it would crash. So this is really bad. So luckily, modern computers detect that that's not allowed, and... Hey, that's your backup program running? Sure, I'll write it in memory. Yeah. All kinds of weird things that happen. So we don't want to do that. All right, someone else had a, another qu question about this? 
Over here, was it, or? Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying that, you know how you've got in the third line, you've got A, star A, and star B. Are you saying that you're getting the, uh, the value from address B, and then you're putting it into address A? <laughs> so what does this mean? It means, look at what A points to, the value of the thing that it, of the, the, the number stored in the memory location it points to, 42. Yeah. And then we're going to put that somewhere else. And we're going to follow and see where points, B points to and put it in that memory location. So we're going to put it where B points to. So Pardon? We're just swapping the so that will swap the value. It will copy over the value of X into the value of Y because we took the addresses of that. Yeah. And then we do temp and then we do the other one, which is why it all works. Everyone's talking about it. That's cool. Are you, if you've got more questions, say so, because I'm not sure we all understand this. Yeah. you just like swap the X and Y? In my printf, could I have just swapped X and Y? Yeah, yeah, in the last of that. After you've got the you just like swap X and Y. I could have got the same effect by just swapping X and Y in the printf. Yeah, that works. That's true. Yes. <laughs> But then I think the program would actually be lying about what the value of x and y was. So. <laughs> well, it's an interesting philosophical question. If we, ch if we have exactly the same output, is the program correct? Um, well, <laughs> it's correct in giving the right answer. It's incorrect as in if your tutor sees that, you'll lose marks because it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So. so I think Richard was talking about existential and, in, in, existential and intentional. So extensionally it's correct because if you don't care how it gets the answer then it's okay. But in a sense we also do care about how you get the answer because as well as programmers we want you to be good programmers. So you should care about whether it does it in an efficient way, whether the program is clear in how it's written, whether it's easily maintained, and all this other stuff. And obviously, blatant cheating like that is, is really bad. Okay, let's, let's go on to my second point, which is array, oh, yeah? Can everyone else be quiet because I can't hear him? Sorry, go ahead. What, what, do, what am I supposed to do to...? Well, you just um, make a, like, into something that returns that makes up in the opposite order. We can't return multiple values. But you can only return a, an int. We don't know a way to return more than one thing at the moment. Right. Is it possible? Is it what? Is it possible? Yeah, it is. Can Yeah. But we're not going to tell you yet, so... <laughs> Trust me, you still want to do this stuff. All right. Um, so arrays and pointers. So let's go back over here and we'll go and call this I know arrays pointers dot C not dot D. I never like D, it's a horrible language, yes. Okay. All right, so shh, what are we going to do? Well, what I want to do is figure out what if I do that? Address of A equals, how do I print out a pointer? Percent P. Percent P. Percent P, okay. What's the address of an A look like, an array? Let's get my mouse in the right spot. And it's called Ah, uh, I forgot to put a new line there. New line. 
Well, it's just a number. But what we really care about is we can take the address of the array, we can also take the address of elements in the array. So let's do that. And we'll have a while loop while i is less than 10. We're going to print out the address of that particular element. I'm going to copy this one from here. There we go. So address of a percent d. And so it's going to be, we're going to print out i there and the address of ai. There we go. So I print out the address of a and now I'm going to look at the address of each element of the array and see what it is. And maybe get an idea of how arrays in C work. I need to increment it. I guess so, yes. It's so good when I've been writing these programs at home, I find I make all these errors and if you guys looking at them, I can't make any errors. You spot them too quickly. Even when I'm trying to make some errors to illustrate them. Anyway, so Huh. That's interesting. Can we make sense of that? The address of A is blah, 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 blah. C18. The address of A0, same. The address of A1, 1C, 202428. Do we see a pattern there? Right, the size of an int is 4. An int takes up 4 bytes. So the array is just 10 successive 4-byte blocks of memory. And the address of the array is the same as the address of the first element. Okay. Let's do something else to it. What if I did that? That doesn't seem like it should work, does it? I'm not taking the address, but I'm saying that just print out A and pretend it's a pointer. Compile it. Whoa. Compiled. Uh, the addresses are different, but it worked perfectly. Yes? Does format code P ask for the um, reference? Format code P expects a pointer. That's what it means. Yeah, it's got to have a reference. By saying the percent P, the C automatically um, references it. So get the pointer back. No. If I tried passing an int to it, it would complain. If it, instead of putting an A there, I put I, C would be very unhappy. I'll show you. Suppose I said this. Oh, well. Better move it above the declaration. Suppose I gave it that. Unhappy, right? I can't pass any old thing and have it automatically take the address or something. But it worked with A. Is that because the plain element is the pointer to toggle compute where the array starts? Okay, so why does that work? Well, the answer is that if you see automatically puts the ampersand in front of arrays. And that's just a special feature of the language that if I say A, the name of an array, when C is expecting a pointer, it turns it into a pointer. All right? Why would that be useful? Well, the reason is, now I want to pass arrays around to functions. Suppose I want to pass an array to a function. You don't really want, if an array's got like a 200 things in it, like with a, with a number like 42 or 197, C just copies that. But you don't really want to make a copy of an array which might have 100 elements or a million elements. That's very inefficient. So what C actually does is you try passing an array to a function, it says, well, I won't copy that whole array. I will turn the array into a pointer and pass that pointer. 
So let's. Isn't that dangerous if we don't change the original array? Yes, indeed. That means I've just said, hey, it's really cool that when you write functions, they can't change their arguments. Well, if it's an array in C, it can. And it's dangerous. You might accidentally change it and mess yourself up completely. But that's C, and we've got to live with it. So let's try doing um, um, above average. I'm going to rewrite it. So this is going to be version two of above average. And this isn't a real, this program works, but it's not really a good design for a program. A, a nice pattern to use for writing lots and lots of programs that you can do over and over again is to have three bits. One is read data, calculate, and output. And this is naughty because it mixes up the input there where we're, I'm reading in stuff with the scanf, but I'm also counting. I'm also calculating the sum of everything for the average. So it's harder to follow when you, you're missing up the calculations with the input. The other thing too is if I separate them out into three different steps, there's more chance of me being able to reuse stuff. All right? If I end up with a function that just reads in numbers into arrays, hey, I can use that in another program where I want to read in some numbers and I want to do, I want to sort them, or I want to calculate the variance, or I want to do a different set of calculations on them than taking the, the average. So we're going to try to make this thing a better program. So we'll, we'll start with this part. So this is the output part, and I'm going to move that into a function. Let's cut it out there, and what do we call it? Um, print proyant. You've made another typo in that. Lots of typos. What? Print above. All right. So that's a function, but I've got to figure out what does it need, to, what do we have to give it for it to work? Well, it's got to know, let's say what it's going to do. It's going to print all the elements of an array that are uh, above a threshold. There we go. So now I've got to pass into it the threshold, which we'll call, I don't know, threshold sounds good to me. And what other information? Well, we need to have the array and we need to have the count of how big it is. So, uh, count. All right. And what's the last one? And the array. And just to, sh just to be different, to show that we don't have to use the same name, it's the generic array now. Why have I changed the name? Well, it was called inputs before because it was the things that were inputs to the program. But this is supposed to be a generic function. Hey, maybe this array wasn't the inputs. Maybe it was calculated by some crazy scheme. So we're just calling it R to say, hey, it's an array. And R, yeah, and also we're pirates. So R, if R, the pirate. Now you got me started. The whole lecture will be in pirate, and then that won't be good. OK. Shh, quiet. So there it is. All I've done is I've, I've grabbed that chunk of code. 
I've whacked it down elsewhere in the program. I've put a, a function heading there. What else am I going to do to make this work? Oh, I got to. Uh, I've defined it. I got to declare it up here as well at the top somewhere. So I just copy the heading there and change that to a semicolon. That's good. And of course, oh, I better use it. So. So print above, and the threshold is the average. What's that? That's cool. We decided it was all right because it rounds down to an integer. So it's okay. It's not the exact average, but it's the integer version of the average. Count and inputs. And let's run it and see what happens. So this is above average 2, above average 2, there we go, oops, inputs undeclared above average 2, uh, line 22. Oh, it's nums. Right. Silly me. Let's try it again. Happy. Run it. That's enough. Average is that. 34 is the only one above average. So it's working the same as before. But... Hang on, why did it work? That's the way you do it. We've, let's look at the declaration here. Pass an int, pass a threshold, that's all okay. Here's how we pass the array. Just looks like an array declaration, except we didn't bother saying how big it was. We don't need to. We don't need to say how big it is because we're not defining, we're not saying to, to see, hey, reserve this much memory for the array. It's already been reserved, so it doesn't matter how big the array is, we're just saying it's an array. And down here we just use the array in the normal way. All right, there's still something funny going on here because Actually, R there is not an array. This is the sorted real truth about it. It's actually a pointer to an int. So this is the horrible truth about it. And it works exactly the same as before. In fact, those two ways of declaring the type are the same. How, how the same were they? Well, I didn't change it up here. And I just changed it down here. And you think, well, doesn't that mean they don't match? Well, they do. Those Actually, when I say int array, open square bracket, close square bracket, as far as C is concerned, that is exactly the same as saying it's a pointer to an int. And what happens here is I could have done this. Take the address of the array and pass that. C does that automatically for you. And it's probably easier to, to, to do, to not to do it because it seems clear what's going on. And this is the thing that confuses people because they, everything passes by copying things except for arrays which automatically use call by reference. It's another way of thinking about it, but that's not really what happens. Really what happens is that when you pass an array as a parameter, C automatically takes the address for you. Well, hang on. There's another thing that's possibly concerning you. Down here when I use the array, I just said that. Shouldn't I be dereferencing the array? 
the, the pointer? Well, that square bracket notation actually works with pointers as well as with arrays. And it actually means the same thing as dereferencing it. If we go back and look at swap, hang on, let's go here. Um, not swap. That one. There we go. That looks weird. Run it. Exactly the same output as before. What did I do? How did I change it? Instead of passing the address of A index I, I've just passed A plus I. Oh, what does that mean? It means because A is an array, C says, oh, I'll turn it into a pointer for you. Automatically takes the address of it. And then I add on a number to it. That means take that address and add that number to it, except it does that addition in a weird and funny way. If I is 1, it doesn't add 1 onto the pointer. Guess how much it adds onto it? 4, exactly. If I is 3, guess how much it adds onto it? 12. It multiplies that number by the size of the thing the array points to and adds that on. What's the effect of that? The effect of it is that if I have my array like this, right, element 0, element 1, element 2, element 3, element 4, and A is a pointer to it, A plus 0 points to there, A plus 1 points to there, A plus 2 points to there, A plus 3 points to there. So of course, what if I want to get the actual value at this location here? That points to it. How do we get the value? Put a star in front of it. So take the thing that R points to, go on I elements, points to one I elements down, get the value that it points to. Still works. All right? This is exactly the same program. In fact, C provides this convenient thing that instead of writing that, which is really ugly and hard to read, you just write it like that. Okay? So, what does it all mean? It means that really what we're working with is pointers. But if, we, if that's too confusing and scary for us, we can just pretend that we're working with arrays by declaring it to look like an array. Like that. We pass in an, an array like that. This thing that we've declared to be an array, we just use it like an its array and it magically changes the array that we passed in. Well, in this case it doesn't because we're not writing to it. But when we do the input one, which we will do really, really quickly because we're almost out of time, it will change that. So, so let's do the next one, which is um, reading. So void, oh, let's, let's call it read array, and let's 
Whoops. So this is going to read in all the values into our array. And so instead of nums, I've got to use r here. I'm no longer going to calculate the sum here because that's doing calculations. Does that look correct? Well, well, we'll see what happens. Oh. We should initialize count here as well properly. And then I don't need to initialize it up here. And what else? Oh, CNUM. Ah, oh, gosh, I've got to move everything around here. No longer belongs up here. It's got to be down here because it's a variable inside this one. That's good. And now um, we need to call it. So what was it? Read array. Count and nums. Like that. Uh, still not done. I've got to declare it up here as well. All right. Is that correct now? Shouldn't count be? Oh, right. Yes. This is going to change the value of, of R of the array. It's also going to change the value of count because we're going to count how many things we read in and we need to, new, need to know that for later on. So, um, oh I said it here, right? Just like our swap thing, I've got to say int star, so that's good, but what have I got to do here? I've got to pass the address in, right? No. For arrays it does. But for everything else it won't. So if I want to have an int that gets changed, I've got to take the address of it. And down here now, because this is now the address of it, wherever I see it, I've got to dereference it. Star count, star count, star count. I think that's everywhere. Um, I need brackets. All right, because otherwise it adds one to count and then dereferences it, which is probably not what I want. And um, now compile it, run it. Average is zero. Oh. We haven't done the calculation, have we? Sum. Well, it worked. Well, it sort of worked. We, pr we successfully read it in using our function, and we, ac we got the average wrong, but then we printed out everything above this wrong average. So why did we get the average wrong? Because sum is zero, and we never bother changing it. So we need one more to work out the sum of everything in the array. So we could put it in here, but that's dodgy. We actually really want to follow this pattern, read data, calculate output. That way then I can use the read array function for a general reading in arrays when I don't care about what the sum is. So I need another function. We've just got time to do it, have we? That clock's fast, isn't it? On the other hand, this one says it's, do I do the last one, take two minutes, or do you want to leave it as an exercise? Continue? All right. Really quickly. Here it is. Sum everything. I just copied the function of a print above. 
because it's almost the same idea. Uh, it's not going to be void, it's going to be int and there's the total add on to the total don't need this anymore What have I got to do here? Return it. And don't initialize that, but I do need to say out of everything in the array. Now I've used some twice. All right, we'll use total here, so we're not confusing ourselves. And I've got to choose it here as well. Hopefully that'll work. If it doesn't, what? Uh, ah! And I haven't declared the function. There's so many things you have to get right to make C programs work. <laughs> Are we good now? I'm passing the wrong array in, am I? Shh. Ah! All right. See, it only took three minutes, whatever. Compile it, run it. Worked out the average, printed things above average. All right. Um, I didn't get to the last thing I was going to say, but it doesn't matter. I'll leave it for Richard to do next week. Um, so now we'll take a break. Hopefully Malcolm Ryan is going to come and, and talk to us. So. Hey, I've got a question. Am I supposed to put a video on now or are we just going to relax for a bit? Yeah. Would it be ideal to have your return success code? So your main knew whether they'd done the right thing or not and hadn't got into an infinite loop? Yeah. 